Over the years, I made several videos regarding so-called astronaut Don Pettit, basically the head of mockery when it comes to NASA. I find it very interesting what he says during this interview from a few months back. He basically states the technology to go back to the moon has been destroyed. He'd love to go back in a nanosecond, but that technology does not exist anymore. But then he goes on to talk about going to Mars. Okay, First off, before even showing this video clip with him speaking about Again, this technology, which I find very bizarre, saying it's been destroyed. How was it destroyed? He doesn't go into details how this so-called technology that they used to go to, to the moon years ago has been destroyed. Let's take a look first off, again, when it comes to mockery in this video clip. Basically, again, mocking his, his audience, his followers, during this presentation. Take a listen to what he says here. Astronauts are really, really good at making pictures in space that look like you've never left the planet. In fact, you, it's almost hard-pressed to tell whether you're in space or not in this picture. You know, we've got some fancy backdrops, I guess. What a strange person this is. You know, basically, again, if you follow my channel and see my previous videos on this so-called astronaut Don Pettit, of course, none of these men have been in space. They're nothing more than basically actors playing a role on the world stage, making the masses, the millions upon millions of people throughout the world believe they've been in space when they've never been in space at all. Now I'm going to play the video clip itself with Don Pettit again being interviewed. Just very bizarre interview, not going into details how this so-called technology to go to the moon has been destroyed. And at the very end, I'll point out something very interesting what he says. People need to read between the lines. Take a listen. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. Going back to 2013 and the supposed Chinese moon landing with this probe, again, nothing but complete garbage. Now this is the camera. Uh, on, on the land, this is the first picture of the moon taken by Chang'e 3. Well, it seems uh, pretty close already. We can see the lunar surface very clearly. Yeah. It is, it is uh, only uh, a few kilometers above the lunar surface. And because there is no atmosphere, so it's a very clear image. And it is daytime. And it's also daytime. The lighting is, uh, is perfect for uh, picture taking. This is a picture taken by China. For the, sake, for the sake of the video, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and just show again how ridiculous the supposed probe moon landing by the Chinese space program. It's a complete, again, complete joke. It's the pictures taken on the camera of Chang'e 3 of the lunar surface. And these are the last 30 minutes for the journey of Chang'e 3 until it landed on the moon. What exactly is taking this footage of the supposed moon landing? Well, it is hovering again. It landed on the moon. Chang'e 3 is on the moon. The first. These people must feel completely ridiculous clapping over some CGI fakery. But they're just doing their job and I'm sure they're being paid very well. Chinese lunar probe is on the surface of our celestial neighbor, the moon. But going to Mars should be 
uh, one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons, and then after that, Mars, maybe a high orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere, maybe going to Europa. There's all kinds of uh, targets to go to places of interest in our solar system. The, the only limit to human future is in our own imaginations. And with that goofy look on his face, he says the only limit to human future is our own imagination. So I find it very interesting. He's not saying it's based on technology, what's feasible based off technology. He says it's based on our imaginations. So it comes down to it, like I played this video clip I'll show in a second with William Shatner stating, science and science fiction are one of the same. There's no difference whatsoever. Take a listen. Um, my question is, through your career and your writing and your acting, you've inspired so many people to enter the sciences. How do you balance science with science fiction? They're both the same. The, the mystery of science fiction is what I'm talking about. Science and science fiction are essentially the same. Thank you very much. How do, how do you prove a black hole? How do you know those gravitational waves prove the collision of two black holes. Somehow, eventually, they are able to observe phenomena. No, they that can't observe. <laughs> it's too far away. It's too theoretical. How do we know what they're saying is true? It, you know what it really is? It's all science fiction. <laughs> And all of that happened in a little town called York, Maine, across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. We are headed 3,600 miles above Earth, 15 times higher from the planet than the International Space Station. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. For this flight, it's time to head home. The United States has shunned the Paris Climate Agreement, but it has big plans beyond planet Earth. President Trump wants to send American astronauts back to the moon and to places no man has ever gone before. Trump's first space policy directive orders NASA to refocus on human exploration and discovery, 45 years after its last Apollo mission to the moon. Trump said the initiative would create many jobs, and he hoped to see a lunar mission serve as a stepping stone to Mars. Up and you start to see the obvious. Life is just a lie, and this whole world ain't what we thought it was. NASA's missions to the moon were never completed. They just filmed them in a room, and people believe it. I used to wonder what it's like to be an astronaut. Now when I see them acting, I can't help but to laugh a lot. They give us cartoons, and they claim that we live on a ball. But it's flat, and it's not moving or spinning at all. Why you lying to us, man? That's something that we want to know. After that, you're going to have to pack up all your stuff and go.
History has been rewritten by winners of wars. The Jesuit order, Khazars, Freemasons, and more. They pulled the veil over our eyes, and it's time to awaken. Through organized indoctrination, our minds have been taken. It's time we take our power back and we rescue our people. The Vatican and the bankers are like Resident Evil. They may have had the greatest plan that was ever concocted, but Illuminati never thought that they'd ever be spotted. They're manufacturing reality all in our heads. They tell us if the earth is flat, then we'll fall off the edge. But if it is a spinning ball, we won't fall off it then. And gravity is our imaginary magic friend why is water always flat when unmanipulated why are pictures of the earth computer generated why you lying to us man that's something that we want to know after that you're gonna have to pack up all your stuff and go Still clear that you and the other space programs that are in operation are connected and are deceiving the entire world. More and more people are waking up every single day, and we are now able to see right through you. Tractor beam <laughs> sucked me right in. Uh, I was going to say thank you very much. I mean, that's as a science journalist. Um, my question is, through your career and your writing and your acting, you've inspired so many people to enter the sciences. How do you balance science with science fiction? They're both the same. I'm excited about it. And the idea is to democratize space, to lower the cost of getting to many destinations in our solar system. And the reason you do this, everybody, the reason a society does this, there are two questions, Lauren, that we have all asked. Where did we come from? Where did we, how did we all get here? Where did we come from? And are we alone in the universe? And if you want to answer those two questions, you have to explore space. Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have way better CGI if it was fake. And, you know, the, the, the colors all look, look kind of weird in space. There's no atmospheric occlusion. You, don't, you know, it's like, everything looks too crisp. I mean, it's kind of silly and fun, but I, I, think, I think that's, you know, silly fun things are important. And uh, I think that's just the imagery of it is something that's going to get people excited around the world. And it's, it's still tripping me out. I mean, I'm tripping balls here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> We'd have way better CGI if it was fake. And it's, it's still tripping me out because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> 